In today's video, we've got a really good one going to happen here today. I uh, had a lot of questions uh, about instruments, and sometimes people ask, how do they work? What are they made of? So coming up, we've got special guest Joe who's going to show us how brass instruments work. Coming up. Welcome to the Learn About Music channel. My name's Todd, and today I have a special guest. This is Joe, and he's going to help us with our demonstration as we talk about brass instruments. A question has been brought up, how do brass instruments work? Well, they are all part of this family of brass instruments, such as the trumpet, as you can see here. There's the trombone that uses a slide. Uh, there's a baritone, there's a French horn, and then the horn that Joe is holding here is a tuba. Now, you're seeing the back side of the tuba here, and I'll show you the front side here in a minute. But basically, brass instruments, the, there's horns that make beautiful sounds, and somebody figured out a long time ago that if you buzz your lips, something like that, and you put it up to a mouthpiece. This is what a mouthpiece looks like. If you put your lips up to a mouthpiece and buzz them, it would create a vibration. Go ahead and do that. And so it creates this buzzing sound, and if you connected it to the length of tubing, that it would create a nice, big, long sound. And where we first heard this is with, uh, it happened uh, a couple thousand years ago. There was horns and things. Uh, and then through Europe, uh, there was alpine horns, where you've probably seen the Ricola uh, commercial for cheese. And there's the guy with a big, long horn, Ricola! Bah! That's the fundamental idea around brass instruments. There's a buzzing sound. It's blown through a length of tubing. The longer the tubing, the lower the pitch. So on a, a horn like this, on a tuba, there is 24 feet of tubing. And so that's why this instrument particularly sounds as low as it does. So Joe has turned the tuba around now, and you can see this is the front side of it and what it looks like. All of these horns, and there is a physical phenomena, and it's a, it's a physics uh, thing, that when you blow air through a horn, there's what's called the fundamental, which is the lowest pitch of a horn, and then if you blow uh, air at a higher speed, it will do what's called the overtone series. And the overtone series is a natural phenomena that uh, happens in all brass instruments, in woodwind instruments. It also happens uh, with the voice, and with the voice, we have uh, what you would call um, the, the resonant frequencies that make my voice sound like my voice and the, like Joe's voice sound like it. There's characteristics, but they're overtones over this fundamental sound. Go ahead and play the, the fundamental sound on the tuba here. So this would be what's called the fundamental, the lowest note here. And then if he doesn't push any of the valves here and he increases the speed of the air, you're going to hear this overtone series starting with uh, the fundamental, then a fifth above it, then a fourth above that, and then a major third and a minor third. Go ahead and play that. And where you hear this uh, uh, prevalent sometimes, uh, where somebody's just using uh, uh, you know, the overtone series to make songs, you've probably heard the uh, trumpet play uh, taps before. Um, this is what taps sounds like. So that's the overtone series. It, it, it gives you just these kinds of pitches. You know, it's funny, um, when we talk about the overtone series uh, on an instrument, you'll sometimes see movies like Gladiator, and they'll have a real dominant part of brass music in the middle of it. And if you go to the scene in Gladiator where they're at the Coliseum and they have the horns, and they're big, long, like Alpine-type horns with no valves, and they're playing this da 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 half steps and things that are not in the overtone series. And I can tell you, 2,000 years ago, valves weren't invented yet. So uh, historically, not accurate, just saying. So over a period of time, what happened is that people who made brass instruments realized there was the, the invention of pianos and harpsichords and organ, and they had all these pitches, the, the half steps that we know, uh, the, the 12 steps of the what's called the, um, uh, a major scale. 
there's the 12 steps, which we do call the major scale, and they wanted to be able to have those pitches to be able to play on brass instruments too. So brass instrument makers figured out that you could use valves to go ahead and add those in. And what a valve is, is that we have the length of tube that goes around the horn, and then they added a valve which would actually lengthen the tube. If you push down the first valve, um, you're going to have air that is going to be uh, moved away from the main valve and it's going to go to a set of uh, other valving here that makes the pitch drop. So they added three valves and most brass instruments have three valves, some have four, some have five. This one happens to have four in it, but the valves would lower the pitch depending on which valve was pushed. So one valve would lower it by a half step, which is the second valve, the first valve would lower it by a whole step, and the third valve would lower by a minor third, or three half steps. And then the, in, in the instance of this horn, you have the fourth valve, which lowers it by a perfect fourth. So using the combinations of these uh, valves, you can get all 12 pitches that are in the scale. So I'm going to have him show you that uh, he's going to go ahead and start uh, on the C, and he's going to uh, go down by each of the uh, valves and see what they do. So the, the half step valve. Then the whole step valve, then the minor third, and then down by a fourth. So he can use combinations of these to do a whole scale from, from the low C to the high C and back down. So go ahead and do a major scale. So they figured out by using this, by combinations of lowering the pitch, that they could pay all the pitches, in fact, all 12 pitches, if you could do a chromatic scale. Perfect, perfect. So you can see that they've, they've, this is how fundamentally how a brass instrument works. It uses the combinations of valves and the speed of your air playing across this overtone series to hit all of the notes that you need to be able to play. In, in the instance of using the trumpet, the French horn, uh, baritone, and tuba, that's the case. But in the case of trombone, it's a little bit different in where it has a slide. And the slide, in effect, does the same thing that a valve does. Again, you have your horn and you have your length of tube. And then if I use a valve, it lowers it a certain amount of length. that adds amount of uh, tube to the length of the horn. If you can see this picture here of the trombone, it uses a slide and all it does is move that slide down and as it lowers that slide or lengthens the slide, the length of tube uh, increases and the pitch drops. So trombone players use that by pulling it the slide up and down to be able to get all of those combinations of whole steps and half steps to get all the pitches of the major scale and the chromatic scale. So that is how a brass instrument works. Play us something and show us the what we can, uh, what can be done on this. Play us something big and huge. <laughs> Very good. That's Joe. Thanks, Joe, for being here today to help demonstrate how brass instruments work. Hey, if you like this video, please go ahead and put a comment below. And, and if you like what you've seen so far, really appreciate you subscribing to the channel so you can see the things that are coming up. Also, question of the day. You have any questions about how other instruments work? Put those in the comments below and maybe we can dive in to show you how other instruments work here on Learn About Music. We'll see you next time.